Good afternoon, everyone. Uh, it's a pleasure to be here. So I want to talk about, share some of the research which we have been doing over the last 15 years, uh, with some with my joint students, previous students, and some with my current students. And the three topics I would like to focus on. One is on uh, modeling flow in transportation networks, and then modeling dynamics in transportation networks, so which Anna asked about just a few minutes back. And then looking at coupling in transportation networks. And I'm going to define this more specifically. So I want to talk specifically about a uh, few models of flow in transportation uh, and dynamics. Coupling, no specific model, but some thoughts about how we can do this. Okay. So this is the outline. So talk about strategic interaction. So if we look at transportation networks, there's some differences between other networks. One is there is a strategic interaction. So there are users who are using this transportation network who make decisions on these networks. Then the flow, the cost is a function of flow on the network. Then I'm going to talk about static user equilibrium, network inefficiency in networks, in transportation networks, which is the difference between user equilibrium and system optimum. Then traffic dynamics. So people are talking about estimating travel time in uh, river networks, water networks, and so on. So talk about how to estimate travel time in transportation networks. Network loading models, some things which we have done. And then move into dynamics about how to model equilibrium in transportation networks with dynamics. Computation, big issue in uh, tra modeling transportation networks. And then finally looking at how to integrate this with social networks and some big data, how to integrate big data into transportation networks, okay? So a lot of things going on here. So if you have some questions, feel free to stop me. So what's the core question in transportation networks? So we saw about in sewer networks, if there's a surge in flow, you want to know how to design your network, right? You want to model the flow in the uh, sewer network itself and so on. So we are given this a topological representation of the transportation network. We are given some attributes of this network. So we are given some characteristics of the road network. We are given some demand information in this network. And we are primarily interested in knowing what is the flow on this transportation network. Right? We want to know what is the congestion in this transportation network. Which means I want to know what is the flow on each road in the transportation network. What's the travel time for this flow, right? And when are people departing from home to go to work, for example? Where do they make stops on Starbucks to get coffee, right? So maybe pick up child at a daycare on the way back to home, for instance, and so on. So we want to know the activities that people participate in in this transportation network. So this is a fundamental question in transportation network. We want to know, given the topology, with the behavior given, how to estimate the flow for the current day, but also how to predict the flow for a future year, right? So we also want to be able to predict the flow for a future time interval. And you can answer a lot of other questions once you understand this basic question. So we'll talk about some of those things. So the area of transportation network modeling looks at some of these issues about how to look at the in, in, uh, interaction between supply and demand in the transportation network and provides a mathematical framework and tools which helps us to compute link flows, estimate congestion, and so on. But not only that, evaluate different designs in the transportation network, right? And then you can do environmental analysis. You can know what's the air quality analysis. You can look at traffic signals. What's the effect of traffic signals on congestion? How to optimize the traffic signals? All of those things can be done within this framework of transportation network modeling. Okay? And finally, we want to come up with solutions which help us to have a uh, sustainable, efficient transportation system for the future years, and which also helps us to do different what if scenarios and test what is the performance of these transportation networks. So, primarily, uh, there are two ways of modeling transportation networks. The way the field has grown in transportation, there are two primary uh, approaches. This is the work which has been done over the last 50 years 
the static transportation network modeling where we model the equilibrium of flows with strategic interactions. The flows are time invariant that means they do not change necessarily over time and uh, here we can come up with some very precise models we can look at computation we can uh, apply them to very large cities and so on. So, there is a lot of work in the last 50 years more recent work in this space has been in the context of developing efficient solution algorithms for real time applications. Okay. This is the more recent pursuit in this area which is dynamic network modeling where the time where the flow is not time invariant flow is time varying right time varying either within a day. So, if you look at 9 am the flow is different than 9 5, 9 10, 9 15 and so on right. So, the flow is changing as a function of time, but flow is also changing as a function of the state of the network right or this can be over days right. So, this flow is the dynamics is over days ok. So, it is a multi day type of a dynamic model. So, you need to explicitly model the temporal aspect of this flow you still have strategic interaction of the agents right. So, you need to model this game theoretic interaction of the agents who are competing <coughs> on this network for the resources. What is the resource on the transportation network? The road space right. So, they are competing for the road space because they want to get to their final destination safely, but also with the minimum time possible right. So, that is the context under which we are studying. So, there is an interaction between the different travel choices, the traffic flow and the cost that is there in this network and you can approach this in multiple dimensions. You can look at analytical models I will touch upon this which are theoretical models of game theory and optimization right where we can understand the properties of these network models very clearly and then apply them to various city networks. The other is approximating some of the realities of these analytical models and developing simulation based models ok. So, that is the overall context of uh, transportation network modeling. So, let us start with the simplest uh, framework first ok. I just want to quickly, quickly provide a refresher to this static network so that you have a concrete understanding of the problem and then we will move on to dynamics. So, this notion of gaming in networks ok. So, as I mentioned transportation networks one is there is a human being right. So, they have a brain they make intelligent decisions hopefully. So, they are optimizing something right on the network. So, they are making some decisions. So, that is one important characteristic. The second is this flow is interacting with other flow in the network and it is trying to make some decisions right and that results in computation and we need to model this computation somehow ok. And the third is when you model this computation you can model this anywhere with different types of cost functions either mainly nonlinear cost functions and the type of cost functions have to represent the type of cost in the real world ok. So, and then sorry uh, we want to be able to model the choices of the different flow and then we want to be able to estimate and predict the flow on the transportation network right. So, to model the behavior of agents in the network we will start with this assumption right which has been validated by many empirical studies that flow is greedy or flow is selfish in nature. What that means is if a agent has a particular choice that they can take at that particular time right which is best for them right we will define what best is which is best for them they are going to take that and there is no incentive for them to deviate from that strategy because deviating would only result in an inferior strategy right and all agents in the network are doing this. Right. So, everyone is playing a game they are all making rational greedy choices in the network under full information right and that results in some kind of a network state ok. So, that is the definition of greedy behavior. 
We have perfect information, right, in the simplest model that we are uh, starting with. And under user equilibrium, right, so the resulting network state is some kind of a user equilibrium. And at this state, there is no incentive for the user to deviate onto any other path, right. So they are making, what is the choice that they are making? They are making a path choice. So there are a lot of paths in the network. They are trying to choose a path and the path that they choose, right, with all the other users, right, is the best path under the given set of conditions, okay. That is the definition of user equilibrium. So let us take this very simple network, okay. Each, uh, maybe this is home, this is work and there is two roads by which you can go from home to work, right. And each link has a cost, okay. So the cost on this link is 2x plus pi. So 2x plus pi means if there are 3 vehicles on this, each vehicle incurs a cost of 2 into 3 plus pi which is 11 units. If there are 4 units of, four units of flow, then it is going to be 13 units and so on. Right? So as the number of vehicles on the link increase, the cost for every agent increases. right? And we also are given some more information that 100 vehicles which want to go from home to work at any given time, okay. And our goal is what? Our goal is to find what is the flow on each link in this network, okay. Let us change the cost functions a little bit just to understand the problem. If I were to change the cost functions, let us just, just say that there is no x, okay. This is just 2 plus pi, this is 10 plus 4, this is 4 plus 10 and this is 5 plus 2, right. By the way, why is x coming in? x is coming in because there is a limited capacity on this road, right. There is a limited capacity on each of these roads which is reflected by this x. That means as I have more congestion, the, because of constraint capacity, the cost of all agents increase, right. But if we just say, let us say, I do not have any restriction on capacity, there is infinite number of capacity, then it is just 2 plus 5, 10 plus 4, 4 plus 10, 5 plus 2. And if I were to do a routing of this 100 units of flow, how would I do that? What would be the answer to that problem? Without the x, how would you solve that problem? That would be a very simple shortest path, right? You would just see whichever is the shortest path. So 2 plus 5 is 7, 7 plus 14 21, right? 14 plus 7 21. Both of them are shortest paths. So you, you agents would be indifferent towards any of those paths, right? So any of those paths would be the shortest path and they would just take any of those paths. But now with this cost function, so the cost is a function of the flow of the network, it does not work like that, right? So you can send, so you have 100 units of flow, if you send 1 unit of flow and 99 units of flow, you would see that these 99 units of flow are going to incur a lot of cost, these 1 units are very less cost, right. So there is incentive for these agents to actually move to this path and so on, right. So what is the best strategy these agents can do at equilibrium, which is there should not be any incentive for these agents to deviate, that would happen when the cost of this path is equal to the cost of this path, right. And I mean that is very simple in this, so you would get a set of simultaneous equations, right. You would suggest if you say x1 is this, x2 is this, x1 plus x2 is the total flow which is 100 and then I equate the path, two path cost, two equations, two variables, I can solve that and at equilibrium this is the flow I would have, okay. Right? So this is the flow and at this flow there is no incentive for users to deviate, right. So this is how you would solve this static equilibrium. So this is the equilibrium because there is a strategic interaction, right, of agents. But now let us say this is just two paths. If I give you a Chicago network which we usually use for our test cases has about 10 million paths. If I have 10 million paths, I cannot possibly solve this type of a model using the approach which I just described, right. So 
you need some kind of a optimization problem to actually solve this right. And this is a classic optimization problem called the Beckman's formulation and you can show that that this formulation would result in an equilibrium flow in the transportation network ok. This would give us the same result as what we had here ok. And so by solving this you would get your equilibrium flow you would get your link travel times, link cost. So, you would know everything about the state of the network right and so this problem is solved right you are all good. So, the problem is solved if you actually use this right, but this is a static formulation which means the cost here is not changing with respect to time right. So, a lot of people have expended a great deal of time and effort in terms of coming up with efficient algorithms to actually solve this problem right and the fastest algorithms actually can solve very large networks New York City, Chicago, so and so on this type of very detailed networks in a few seconds ok. And then what they do is to capture time they do AM peak, AM off peak, PM peak, PM off peak. So, they kind of divide this into time slices have a different OD matrix for these different time intervals right and then solve the problem get the state of the network and so on. So, this is a very important problem because if you have the link flows you can do a lot of things you can predict the uh, environmental emissions in the network. You can predict the speed distributions right you can see what the effect of control is in this network and so on. So, this is a very very interesting problem for us. The other uh, concept which I would like to touch upon is this notion of price of anarchy ok. So, price of anarchy is the difference. So, there is another problem which I really have not talked about which is a system optimum. So, if everyone were to cooperate not compete, but if everyone were to cooperate right you would get a different solution and that solution is a global optimum right. And the difference between the user equilibrium solution the selfish solution and the system optimum solution the global optimum is the network inefficiency that is the opportunity that you have in your network right to improve the performance of your network. And how do you do that you can do it by various ways you can either do it by demand management which is providing incentives to users in your network right to change the behavior or you can do network interventions right putting uh, stop signs like putting pricing on your network right network pricing. So, you can do a lot of things on the network side or you can do things on the user side to reduce this inefficiency that is the primary goal of all network management strategies right. So, there is a lot of work in computer science in measuring this price of anarchy and this has become a very popular result in the last 5 to 7 years. And the simplest example which captures this is this example here. So, this is an example which shows two, two paths right simple network the cost on this is 1 uh, the cost on this is x at user equilibrium there is only one unit of flow which wants to go from here to here right path the, uh, the flow is going to go on this. So, the cost is just 1 into 1 right so 1 unit of flow, but if everyone were to coordinate right if everyone were to cooperate you can see that they can actually do better right and each of them the system optimum cost would be about 3 over 4 ok. So, the network inefficiency which is called the price of anarchy the worst case network inefficiency is about 4 over 3 and so this has some very important implications in terms of uh, the study of uh, networks with agents networks with strategic agents right between this system optimum problem and the user equilibrium problem both in the control of networks and in terms of the design of networks. So, this has some serious implications ok and a lot of papers which look at ok now if I change the cost function from this fixed cost to a stochastic cost from this fixed cost to an elastic cost make users right not super rational, but have imperfect information to users. So, all these variants have been studied within the context of static networks ok and their results in the literature related to these kind of problems. 
So that's the quick introduction to uh, static networks. So let me talk about dynamic networks. Okay, so the same problem, we are still interested in the link flows, in the path flows, but I'm going to add another dimension to the problem, which is the element of time, right? So not only do I care about the link flows and the path flows on the network, but I care about the distribution. At any given time, how does the link flow and the path flow, right? How does it look like? That's what I'm interested in. And why does that happen? It happens because the cost function, the cost is itself changing with time. There's a dynamics on the lane due to the interaction of different vehicles in the network and due to the interaction of the vehicles with the infrastructure in the network, right? And so we have three pieces in this dynamic model which we need to consider. And this is the research which is in the last 20, 25 years in the transportation area. And so there are different uh, elements which you need to model for actually finding out the flow on the transportation network in a dynamic context. So one is this dynamic network loading model. So this is, this model represents the interaction between different vehicles on the links and the paths, which tells us the travel time operator, right? Which tells us the cost operator in the network. And once you have that, then you can do the equilibrium on top of that cost operator, which predicts the user choices and the link level travel times. And the other equivalent problem is you can look at the ideal or the global system state, which is the system optimum problem. And then you can also measure the dynamic network efficiency. So our research in the last five years has focused on looking at these four different problems. And there are few advances which we have, which we have made in terms of modeling this dynamic flow right in this network. Why is this dynamic flow very interesting? Especially with uh, sensor installations in traffic networks, ability to collect real time data, right? You need to be able to, one, you have better uh, ability to monitor, observe and control transportation networks, which allows us to do more uh, time varying interventions on the network and we want to be able to observe the effects of these interventions right in real time. You also want to have the ability to incorporate various behavioral mechanisms in the uh, modeling process and you want to come up with better planning and operational decisions for uh, improving the performance of your transportation network. So just like uh, static equilibrium right Dynamic equilibrium does not have a universally accepted notion, okay? So just like uh, static equilibrium, we are not just equilibrating the path flows because there are different dimensions that a user has when you look at the dynamic problem. A person not only chooses routes, but a person chooses when they want to leave home because some people have experienced, right? You might want to take uh, a particular mode of transportation or a particular path, but you might say, no, I don't want to leave at this time because I know it's going to be congested. I'm going to wait five minutes or I'm going to wait half an hour. So you have this right degree of freedom to choose the departure time as well in addition to the path, okay? So you need to model both this departure time and the path and possibly the mode that a person wishes to choose, whether they walk, they take a taxi, they take a bus, right, or the drive, whatever mode that they decide to use at that particular time. So it's a multi-dimensional problem that you need to actually solve. And how you solve that analytically is a pretty hard problem, right, to even formulate. And that's what uh, we'll try to, uh, I'll try to show you a flavor of one specific model uh, of just a simultaneous route and departure time choice. So people primarily look at dynamics only for the route choice or this combined choice of route and departure time or maybe other types of choices which are there in the transportation network, okay? So for modeling this dynamic equilibrium, for, for us to be able to finally model the flow in this network, as I mentioned, we need to have a very good 
uh, network loading model. A network loading model is something which captures at the resolution that we want, right? Something which captures the interaction of the traffic, which finally spits out, which finally tells us what is the time it takes for you to go from point A to point B when this number of vehicles are there on this link or path, right? And so it, it is like a black box, if you will, and different uh, research groups have different types of black boxes, uh, depending upon the level of detail they would like to have, depending upon the type of resolution, and depending upon the type of uh, modeling framework that they're using. Broadly speaking, there are two different types of modeling frameworks for this. One is a macroscopic model, which kind of models not each vehicle on the link, but which models a link as a whole and a bunch of flow on this link, right? So they really don't care about the vehicle to vehicle level interactions. They care only about the flow level interactions. The other is a more of a macroscopic, oh, sorry, microscopic models, which model individual vehicles in the network and then tries to determine what the travel time is. So at a very broadly, very simplistic view, these are the two classes of models which people use for these network loading models. So these are some of the uh, uh, dynamic network loading models which have been proposed in the literature, right? So there's point Q model, which is very simplistic, which is like a queuing model as a function of the number of vehicles. You just have an equation which kind of tells you what is the cost as a function of vehicles and the queuing just happens in a vertical fashion in this network. So it's not very really realistic, but it's super simple to actually uh, model this kind of a phenomena using a point Q. And there have been some more recent advances, the link exit flow function, link performance function, and link delay function. But all of these things suffer from one fundamental limitation, which is they don't model. So if you really drive, what happens? As you are, as someone breaks in front of you, you, you break, and then someone behind you breaks, and so on. So there's an invisible shock wave which is created in the network which affects the flow, right? And when the link is full, people are actually queuing into the next link. No one stops really at the intersection and so on. So we call this the link spillover, right? Uh, and the shockwave behavior should be captured very accurately. And none of these models accurately capture that link spillover and the shockwave uh, behavior. And we have developed models uh, recently which can capture this type of phenomena. And that gives us a more accurate estimation of the travel time functions in the network, okay? So I won't really go into the details of this. So the challenge is to be able to capture these travel time functions very accurately, but also have some nice properties when you're doing this. And coming up with a tractable formulation for doing that is a very um, uh, reasonably challenging problem. And we have, we have kind of addressed this and published some of this work uh, and the, uh, what this primarily does is it gives us a travel time distribution, right, and then computes the dynamic user equilibrium uh, based upon this. So the way we do this uh, network model is we break up a given link into small cells, and each cell is kind of looking at the propagation of the flow, and we call this a cell transmission model, and then we have different types of cells depending upon the type of roadway that you have, and we come up with a representation of uh, the mathematical model to capture the demand preservation, the movement of the flow in these different types of cells, right? And then the travel time computation, right, in this network. So we look at the cumulative uh, departures on any given path. So this is a path-based model. So we're kind of looking at each path in the network, the cumulative departures. And then the cumulative arrivals at whichever point of interest it is at the destination, right? And when you look at the difference between these two, right, this endpoint to this endpoint would give you the max travel time, whereas if you just look at the average, you can just come up with somewhere here, right? So either you can come up with an analytical formulation for the maximum travel time or the average travel time, and then you can use this cost function, okay, to compute the dynamic equilibrium, right, with this route choice and departure time choice, okay? So the formulation of uh, this dynamic user equilibrium, right, we start off with the most simplest problem that we can think of, 
what's the most simplest problem? You just have a single path, right? The choice of dimension is people decide when they want to leave from their home and you want to decide, right, what's the best time to leave. You have some cost on this path, right, to go to work, okay? And this is called a single uh, bottleneck problem and it has single origin destination. And this problem is, you can solve this pretty uh, easily, okay, with this type of uh, uh, demand that you have from A to A2 and A to A1. And so these parameters here represent the amount of penalty you get if you go late to your work, there is a penalty, right? Or if you go early, right? There is also a penalty, but the penalty of going late is higher than the penalty of going early. And as you can see, these penalties are varying across these different user groups, right? That means different users are having different types of penalties because, right, all users are not the same. So there is heterogeneity of users in the network which is captured in this model. And so as People are making these choices. Once you apply this model, you can find out how many people would choose when to leave home, right? And in the more general network model, they, you can also find out which path they're going to choose to go to these different destinations. Okay. And so this is the uh, representation of this analytical model. Okay. So this is the equilibrium condition, essentially it translates to the same thing which we said in the static case other than this there is a time component here. So, there is a subscript of um, time, but the essence of the game theoretic notion of equilibrium is very much uh, similar. Okay. So, you are finding the equilibrium over time here and alpha represents the uh, penalty factors that you have for going early or late, right. There is an early arrival time penalty, so there is a schedule delay. There is a demand satisfaction, right? So, the demand in the network has to be satisfied. There should be no loss of flow in the network. And then the travel time computation will come from our dynamic network loading model, right? So, this is a complete representation of the analytical model for a general traffic network with heterogeneous users, okay? With a spatial queue type of a uh, network loading model. On the theoretical side, which I am not going to really go into, right? I see some of the students are already sleeping here on this side. Uh, so, on the theoretical side, this is a pretty hard problem if you want to show the existence of the equilibrium, if you want to talk about right the how many equilibria actually are there, how to compute the equilibrium, right? Showing those things is a pretty hard mathematical problem. And so, you need to do some relaxations, you need to look at the monotonicity of this cost function, right, and then prove right the properties of this equilibrium solution. So, this is something which we do and then the reason we do that is we want to move towards developing an efficient solution algorithm okay? and we develop an uh, algorithm which is based upon this projection algorithm which is taking the gradient of the path flow vectors in this network and then doing a simulation with the CTM and then repeatedly solving this quadratic program until it converges to a good equilibrium solution, okay. So, this turns out to be a computationally efficient uh, solution algorithm which actually exploits the network structure to obtain a good solution in the problem, okay. And so, these are some, so you can apply this algorithm to any city wide network and we have done run many numerical results computations and once you solve this problem checking whether a solution is the equilibrium or not is pretty easy, right? So, if you can see whenever there is a flow, right, that is the minimum cost. Whenever there is no flow, that is always higher than the minimum cost. So, you can always check whether the solution is indeed an equilibrium solution or not. So, we have done tests on uh, various networks to check whether this, uh, you can obtain an equilibrium solution and so you can find out the link flows and the path flows, right? So, you can do the flow modeling on general travel networks with different types of users, different types of cost functions, right? And for many OD flows in the network, okay? 
So the next problem which we looked at is can you compute the price of anarchy in this type of networks? And we compute the network inefficiency in this uh, in these networks and it typically ranges between somewhere between 1.3 to all the way to just greater than 2 uh, in this dynamic networks. And this is still an open problem. Really no one has got a good handle on how to compute the uh, price of anarchy for these type of uh, problems. Okay, all right, so I, I was told that I have just like 10 minutes. <laughs> so I'm going to wrap up in like another 5 minutes. So we have looked at, so far we have looked at the flow in, uh, how to model flow in traffic networks and the dynamics, okay. So the last idea I want to touch upon, uh, this is more recent work in the last 5 years where we are looking at coupling of this transportation networks, okay. So when we talk about coupling, right, transportation networks are not operating independently, right, but they're operating within social networks, within other infrastructure networks like power networks, right. So for example, in Hurricane Sandy, first time the subway network was shut down, it directly has an impact on how people travel, right. So there are direct interdependencies between transportation network and other networks. So. Um, we have couplings with social networks and more recently we have been collecting data on social networks in transportation. So quickly two uh, types of networks where we have been collecting social networks. One is understanding the social network representations in regular travel patterns. What is the role of your friends in terms of the type of activities you travel? For work of course you do not have a choice, right? But for uh, shopping and eating, we see a very strong evidence that social influence is a big factor in terms of the activities and where you do these activities. And we are working on this NSF project where we are collecting data on social networks of people during Hurricane Sandy and we have data of about 1100 households and their social networks from New York and New Jersey and we are looking at questions related to the homophily, the type of networks that are there in terms of the decision making of when to evacuate, where to evacuate and the decision to evacuate and collective action that people have in these type of networks. So these are couplings between transportation and then this can result in evacuation flows in your transportation network, know the uh, hot spots in your transportation network when evacuations happen and so on. We also uh, some of my uh, PhD students, they work on these big data problems. We have tools which help us to collect data from Foursquare and Twitter. We have access to uh, taxi data from many cities in US and China. And so we really understand a lot of important questions which help us to uh, look at the performance metrics in transportation uh, using this right, big data. So some problems which we have looked at. Okay, so this is uh, a visualization of the data from the taxi cabs in New York City and you can see the flow. So this is a one day flow of the different trips in uh, of the taxi movement. So each taxi in New York City has a GPS unit. So we can collect the lap and the long of every taxi where they make a pickup, where they drop off, right, the fare that they pay, the travel time, the distance that they travel and so on. So you can see the dynamics of the flow movements, but this is nice to see, but this does not tell us anything about the underlying phenomena. So we have actually kind of looked at various uh, problems using this type of taxi data, looking at the urban dynamics, understanding where the hotspots are in the network and looking at the spatial network and the impact that the spatial network has in the movement of these taxis. We also done travel time estimation, network state estimation using this taxi data uh, using very limited amount of taxi data from New York City. We have kind of measured the efficiency of these taxi systems. So anyone who has taken Uber knows that there is a big revolution going on in the sharing industry right now, right. So we have kind of measured do we really need Uber type of systems or is the current market itself very efficient and the problem is just the matching between the driver and the rider. And how do we measure the efficiency of this taxi system? So this is a paper 
right, which measures the efficiency of the taxi systems. And what we find out is if we can actually properly match and reduce the empty trips of these taxi drivers, you can actually improve the efficiency by almost 90 percent, right. And so there's some very important insights one can draw by connecting this big data from this technology with the networks that you have, right, from transportation or other types of networks, okay. So Shinyan, my PhD student is here, right, he is uh, working on the structure of networks, but he is a senior PhD student, he is very well uh, equipped to work on all of these problems, so he has helped me to work on all these problems. And so he can look at the function flow interdependency, so that's his PhD topic. And so he's here to work with all of you, right, on these interesting problems in sewer networks, on pipe networks. With Suresh, we have been working on different types of problems related to resilience. So, yeah, we are very excited to be here, right, and I would like to thank Professor Paik and Suresh for inviting me to this workshop. And I'll stop here. Thank you.